Good morning, everybody. We just had a major event happen in the book. We don't know all the details yet. We know the kids were outside playing. Maybe a game got a little out of hand. And a, an icy snowball was thrown. And our best prediction so far is that Mr. T got hit. So let's find out what happens next. March. Jessica, Act 9, Scene 1. It's been a few weeks since Mr. Turp went into a coma. I felt numb when I first heard. My mother got a phone call on the night it happened from Mrs. Williams. The principal was calling all the parents. Mom hung up the telephone and explained the situation. I sat paralyzed, unable to move or speak. It was the second time in less than a year that I was in disbelief. The first time was when Mom told me about Dad and his girlfriend. The day after the accident, our class had a substitute. I don't remember her name. I only remember our class being silent. We were given some silly worksheets to keep us busy, but no one could concentrate. Not even Luke. Instead, we stared blankly at the papers or out the windows. Each of us lost in an ocean of thoughts and a roller coaster of emotion. Mrs. Williams came into our classroom later that morning. Boys and girls, I came up here to talk to you about Mr. Turrupt, she said from the front, front of the room. I want you to know the truth, and not some rumor that might be floating around. Mr. Turrupt is in a coma, which means he's not conscious. That wasn't all Mrs. Williams said, but that's all I remember. I already knew the truth, but I wasn't ready to hear her or anyone else talk about it so freely. I knew about comas. People don't always wake up from them. It isn't. It wasn't fair. I needed comfort. I wanted to re read Bridge to Terabithia and Missing May. I wanted the company of Jesse Aarons and Summer and Uncle Ob. Before Mrs. Williams finished, I did hear one other thing she said. She claimed that the snowball incident was an accident, not anyone's fault. I sure didn't believe that, and I know my classmates didn't believe it, either. I wonder if Mrs. Williams thought that Mr. Turrup had let things go too far, and if she did, would he be getting in trouble? I sure hope not. He'd been dealt enough already. Besides, Mrs. Williams was one was the one who gave us special permission to go outside. We could blame her, but I didn't want to see anyone get in trouble. I just wanted Mr. Turrup to wake up and fix this mess. Luke. I wanted to go and see Mr. Turrup. My mom and dad didn't think it was a good idea, but I wouldn't listen. I didn't stop pestering them about it. I needed to go. Eventually, they gave in. I stepped off the hospital elevator and stared down the long hall. Mr. Turrup was in one of these rooms. Nurses moved around behind some desks. I heard some of them laughing. How could they laugh? How could they laugh when my teacher was in a coma? They grew quiet as I walked past. I felt some of them look at me and my mom, but I just kept walking until I saw his name on the door, Turrup, room 404, a palindrome, just like our classroom. I stopped and took a deep breath. I felt Mom's hand on my shoulder. I walked in. I saw him, on his back, perfectly still in his bed. Tubes poked out his arms, a mask covered his face, machines beeped. His eyes stayed closed. He didn't move, not an inch. Only his chest rose up, then fell down with each frail breath. I wanted to say something. I wanted to tell Mr. Turrup I was there. I wanted to tell him he was going to be okay. I wanted to, but I couldn't. I tried. I tried, and I felt a lump in my throat begin to choke me. I didn't want to cry. I told myself not to cry. I had coached myself not to cry, but I couldn't stop it. Tears welled up in my eyes and fell down my cheeks. I turned and ran out of the room. Mr. Turrup was going to die. I just knew it. I saw him. I saw what he looked like. He was going to die. My teacher was going to die. The elevator doors opened and I stepped in, my mom right behind me. How could he have let this happen? Why did he put so much trust in us? He should have learned from my plant concoction. He knew it probably wasn't a good idea, but he let me do it anyway. Just like he knew our rough play outside probably wasn't a good idea, but he let it go again. He should have yelled at us. He should have yelled at Peter for the frisbee. He should have yelled at him for the puddle of water. He should have yelled at him so that we knew he was serious. Then this would have never happened. He should have stopped us. Now he was going to die. We stepped off the elevator and walked up walked to our car. As we pulled away, I saw the word hospital written on a sign. Mr. Turrup slept in the hospital. Dollar word. I almost smiled. Jeffrey. Turrup's in a coma. I know what that's all about. I remember from when I was little. Comas are terrifying. 
I'm never going back to a hospital. Those places are full of bad memories and bad luck. I'd like to see Mr. Turrup, but I can't visit him. I can't do it. Luke told me it was scary. I know. People in comas die. It should have been me in that coma, not Michael. It should have been me in that com coma, not Turrup. Peter Snowball should have hit me. Now our teacher's going to die. This sucks. School sucks. Everything sucks. It was better when I didn't care. Anna. I heard Luke telling Jeffrey that he went to see Mr. Turrup in the hospital, that it was awful, and that Mr. Turrup wasn't awake or moving, but I couldn't help feeling the way I did. I wanted to go and see him, too. I just didn't think I could do it alone, so I asked Jessica and Danielle to go with me. We sat at lunch. We were quiet. No one talked much, not since the accident. Anna, what's wrong? Jessica asked. She's always good at knowing when something's not right. Nothing, I said. I pulled my PB and J apart. Just tell us, Danielle said. I still didn't say anything. I focused on my sandwich, picking at it, but not eating. Come on, Danielle urged. I blurted it out. I want to go and see him. Silence. I brushed my sandwich pieces into a pile. I noticed Danielle and Jessica weren't eating either. The three of us busied ourselves with staring at our food. Me too, Jessica finally said. Really, Danielle said. Aren't you guys scared to go? Yes, I said. I scooched forward. So let's go together. Will you guys go with me? I will, Jessica said, pushing her food aside. You think your parents will let you? Danielle asked. She was asking both of us, but I answered. I already asked my mom. She said she'd take us. I'll try, Danielle said. I want to go. We're stronger when we stick together, remember? Jessica said, just like Mr. Turrup told us. Her voice got quiet as she mentioned his name. We got quiet. We didn't talk about him anymore. It hurt too much. Danielle. I knew mom and grandma would have a fit about me going to the hospital with Anna, especially with her mother, but I didn't care. Not this time. I found the courage to ask them because it was important to me. We were sitting in the kitchen preparing dinner. I peeled the potatoes. Grandma peeled the apples for one of her delicious pies. Mom managed everything else. When do you think this, this snow is going to be gone? Grandma asked. Farmers love to talk about weather. A nice hot apple pie did sound wonderful in this cold, snowy weather. I inhaled deeply and then took the plunge. I want to go see my teacher, I said. Anna's mother is driving her and Jessica. I'd like to go with them. You're not going anywhere with that girl and her mother. We've already told you that, Grandma snapped. Mother, Mom said. I'll handle this. Keep an eye on dinner. Danielle, come with me. I don't like it, Grandma said. Apple peels missed the pile and flew onto the floor. I'm so grateful my mom pulled me away. I love Grandma, but she's like a piece of iron, unbendable. And forget about the teacher thing. In her mind, a teacher's still the person that wraps you on the knuckles with a ruler or across the backside with a paddle. She doesn't get Mr. Turrup at all. According to Grandma, this whole incident was his own fault. Seems to me that teacher of yours has only himself to blame, Grandma said one, one night while doing dishes. If he had more control over them boys, especially that Peter, this wouldn't have happened. I stopped drying the plate in my hands. He needed a lickin months ago, and a good teacher would have given him one. My plate smashed onto the kitchen floor. I didn't mean to drop it. Mom, on the other hand, she gets it. I've told her about Mr. Turb many times, so I know she understands how special he is. We sat on my bed, side by side, not looking at each other, but at the wall across from us. I'd hang my sketch of Mr. Turb there. You really think you want to see him? Mom asked. Yes. It's not going to be easy. He's going to have machines and tubes hooked up to him. He's not going to look at you or say anything. I know. Luke was talking in school about his visit. He said it was scary. And I don't like you being around Anna or her mother, but I also think it's probably better that you go with your friends than alone. Charlie could drop me off and pick me up. The bed bounced as I twisted to, to face Mom. It sounded like she was about to agree. Please. Anna. It was time for us to go to the hospital. Jessica and her mother were already at my house. Our mom sat in the kitchen drinking coffee like they often do now. Jessica and I sat around with some books, but even she found it difficult to focus enough to read. Danielle's here, I announced as soon as I saw the pickup truck pull into, her, into our snowy driveway. Mom came to the porch door to greet her with me. Oh my goodness, I heard mom say to herself. She didn't even realize I was staring right at her. Same old red farm truck. Did she know that truck? I didn't get it. Hi, Danielle, I said as Danielle came up the steps. This is my mom, Terry. Hi, Danielle, Mom said. Come on in, out of the cold. Danielle stomped the snow off her shoes on her welcome mat. 
I took her coat and hung it in on our rack. It's nice to finally meet you. Anna has told me so much about you, Mom said. They shook hands. It's nice to meet you too, ma'am, Danielle said back. Thank you for letting me come with you. I'm glad you could join us, Mom said, and you can call me Terry. I let Danielle further into our house. When I looked back, Mom stood gazing out at the door. After a long few seconds, she turned away. She smiled at me and said, Why don't you give Danielle a quick tour of the house and hang out for a few minutes, then we'll go. What are you looking at? I asked. Nothing, really. That's my brother Charlie, who dropped me off, Danielle said. I didn't know you had a brother, I said. Yeah, he's 27, a lot older than me. He works on the farm with my dad and grandpa. I looked at Mom. She's 27, too. He drives that red Ford everywhere, Danielle said. Always has, Mom said. Does it still have a dent in the driver's side door? Yes, ma'am, Danielle said. My jaw dropped. What was going on? How did Mom know that? And why wasn't Danielle as shocked as me about her knowing? I looked at Mom, but before I could get anything out of my mouth, I didn't know what to say anyway. She said, a quick tour, Anna. Well, okay, we're going to stop there. We went a little bit over, but that's okay. Um... This is going to be really difficult on some of the students, all of the students, and especially trying to go into the hospital to visit Mr. Turrup. But it sounds like we've got another storyline kind of popping up here with um, Danielle, uh, Anna's mother, Terry, and Danielle's brother, Charlie, who seem to be about the same age. So I'm curious what's going to unfold there. All right, I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you have any predictions about what's going to happen next in the book, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Um, even going with who your favorite character is, I haven't heard from a lot of you about that. Um, I look forward to continue reading this tomorrow. See you guys later. Let's have a great day. Bye-bye.